And jumping right on into the draft, AA and Faceless Void leading things off for LGD Gaming while another Ogre Mage I pick. And I'll tell you what, man, it's hard to get through a game where you don't see an Ogre make his way into not just the pick bands, but to just get picked. He's one of those heroes that I feel like many consider to be good enough to almost always pick up in the first two, but not good enough to warrant a first round band. So seeing a lot of his play in the Eastern Division in particular, though our Western Division really does get hot and heavy coming up next week. And we'll have full details about that for you coming up soon. Soon. But Ember Spirit goes with that Ogre Magi and that IO from LV, and it's going to be an Invoker pickup for LGD. Yeah, and it's kind of interesting. Ember Spirit picked up right after the Invoker. Um, I'm looking at the lineup just so far from LGD with the Faceless Void, Ancient Apparition, Invoker, and these are all heroes that work actually quite well together, especially in a global sense with the AA Invoker. If you are going to go Exhort, and I, I imagine you would just just because of this draft, like Sunstrike with the Chronosphere is very easy. Sunstrike in conjunction with an AA Blast is very, like I said, strong global potential. But um, like I've, I've mentioned before, Quaswax Invoker is actually pretty good against Ember Spirit. And actually even the IO relocates because, well, for one, the relocates, it kind of disjoints their movements and their and their follow-up of, of trying to follow up on someone else with the relocate. But the Ember Spirit, it, it uh, completely nullifies his, um, his Flame Guard. It just dwindles it away instantly. So it's kind of a weird situation. I still imagine Invoker will go Exort, and I believe Yao will be playing that. Yeah, I, I tell you one thing I do like a lot about the IO picked into the face of the faceless void. Uh -huh. get, get what I get? Ah, right yes. There. But uh, picked in the uh, response to the faceless void. Anyone he catches with a chrono, if IO's quick, he can relocate that target out. Sure. So you're talking the, the same effect that a vengeful spirit will give you, but it's uh, an effect that can be used in many, many other ways in comparison to uh, to swamp, which is what you usually get from the venge. So just something to keep in mind. And, you know, IO, anytime you have IO plus whatever they want to put with it, and then you also have an amazing roamer like an Ogre Magi, once the IO hits six, if the, if the Ogre even wants to solo smoke or say he has an Invis rune or something like that, moves into the enemy jungle, it's almost a guaranteed kill when you can lead off with a fire blast and then have the, uh, the relocate IO plus one coming into follow. So I really dig LV Gaming's draft right now, but they do need a little bit more punching power, I think. When I look at LGD, I see an invoker and a faceless void regardless of how they want to build same with the lion really ancient apparition is very squishy but loves to fight as soon as he hits six i the composition i see from lgd i think is going to be comfortable fighting at any phase of the game while lv with the io very six dependent ember spirit not just six dependent but really needs uh, really needs farm the earth shaker is a nice addition there works really well with the ogre magi in terms of being able to just basically chain lock either a target or a, a series of targets but i still feel like they need more mid-game damage than they have right now well the earth shaker pick kind of makes things interesting because now they have what yeah, looks like on paper ringing. three supports so this is either going to be an offlane ogre magi or an offlane earth shaker um, I, I i've seen earth shaker solo mid before but with an ember spirit it leads me to believe ember will be mid so Reserved. interesting right. stuff right here and this is why i think lv has been i think for me personally anyway the, the standout team for this tournament at least in the eastern scene just because um, they're so flexible. Like I, this is such a different draft than even when we saw them draft yesterday and days prior. They're able to do a lot of different things, and I think especially in this latest patch, flexibility seems to be what benefits teams the most. And I, it's just fun to see them change things, uh, change things up so drastically. I mean, last night we saw them draft. I know it didn't work, but it was like you know the <laughs> Dazzle and Spirit Breaker first two. Uh, I, I just like their their. Um, them wanting to, you know, experiment with new things and being successful the majority of the time. Yeah, I really want to see how they're going to utilize these three heroes, as you had mentioned. I mean, IO, obviously, especially on Radiant side, works really well to go duo mid if they want to do something like that just to confound things. But that still does create the situation, as you had said, where you're assuming one or both of the heroes of Ogre Magi and Earthshaker could end up going out into the offlane. I don't mind duo support offlanes, especially with heroes like Shaker and uh, Ogre. Ogre just able to keep himself alive, very innately tanky. Earthshaker is strength hero to start, not not really always thought of as just the tankiest hero. But if you have a Fissure, you can get yourself out of trouble. You can protect your tower. It's very difficult to push down. It's just a question of if they wanted to take a Ten chance like that, go a 2-2-1, two, two, and then isolate uh, in their safe lane one Razor. solo hero. It's going to be a Razor pickup. I really Radiant like LGD's draft, pick. man. Like I just feel like this draft from LGD is going to be so hard for uh, LV in their current state to deal with in the mid game. And, you know, the Invoker, again, if he goes Exord, like you said, it's awesome with a Faceless Void. It's awesome with an Ancient Apparition. They just have so many ways to go into a fight and so many ways to just nuke down whoever the hell they care to. 
Yeah, I, on paper right now, before we see this last pick, it's looking like just Chronosphere the Ember and you basically win the fight. So this is definitely going to have to be a, a very beefy core and a, and a core that needs attention from the other team. Right. So something that's very important. Um, I don't know. I'm just going to throw it here. Is out there like PA here like Sven here that you oh actually Sven's Sven was banned. banned out. Yeah, interesting. Yep. Same with the Tiny. I yeah. was actually thinking his Sven would be good too, but he he and Tiny both banned out after the IO pick. But something that needs attention, something that, like, actually PA is pretty good against Void in general now because they you know, with the Bristleback, but that's good. I mean, a, a tanky hero that you cannot really ignore that easily in fights, at least early on. Yeah, but look at the look at the, all the, the answers they have to that Bristleback. They have Razor, who can static link and sap any right click that he happens to have. And yes, Quills are really what you're relying on, but nonetheless, you don't want to be completely out there slinging a, swinging a wet noodle around. You've got two really good pieces of lockdown of line. You've got the Chronosphere. You've got Invoker with Cold Snap. Um, and he is going to be susceptible to Ice Blast as well. So I I, I just like it. I flat like LGD's draft much better here. I I maybe this this strikes me as something that's borderline pre med from L V. It's just too out of the box for them to just be free wheeling it. So maybe they have something else in mind and there's some way that this lineup's going to work that we're not anticipating. But for right now, I feel like they're really under the gun to execute because L G D with this lineup that can't snowball so hard will just run them over if they make too many mistakes. Yeah, I, I agree with you actually. I don't think Bristleback is really the best hero, but they they definitely did something that was that's more tanky that's going to take some attention, yeah. Um, but yeah, the static like typically Razor's thought to be a good a very good hero against Bristleback for one the static link as you mentioned, but also you can't really afford to spam you know the viscous nasal goo on Razor because you're just going to purge yourself constantly, mm -hmm. so that that's kind of an interesting thing. And then it's actually going to be Whisper playing the Earthshaker. I thought Whisper was their offlane hero, so I was like, oh, he's going to be an offlane Earthshaker, but he's got. A ward on him, and he's okay. I'm, he's saving some gold. I'm checking, looking around. I think it still is going to be an offline earth shaker. And here comes an aggressive smoke five man here from LV. LGD has got wide. If they can catch one person in the jungle, it'll certainly be handy dandy. The closest target is Siler. As he moves up towards his own tier one, they're going to cut across right near mid tier one and on up the hill. And it doesn't look like anyone from LGD is in range. Um, and usually, you know, this is pretty common. Like, you'll send one out like this just to keep an eye and try to make sure that they're not going to ward. This is actually very dangerous for Siler to be here by himself as they had, if they had gone this way instead. Uh, it could have been a first blood for them. Instead, they're going to come back down. They are going to spot Ancient Apparition, but not quick enough. Not quick enough to, uh, to well, there's really not much they could do. Um, they didn't have demons up front. It was just the Bristleback and, the, and in flame on the Ember Spirit. So, LGD dodges the bullet, and no wards went down there either. That's a little shocking. Yeah, um, and it looks like Wisp, is, he's going to actually camp this top rune. I think it would be smart for DDC to, to hang around mid and at least make sure that the Ember Spirit gets a couple free CS because he is pooled and he did spend all his gold on a poor man's shield, so that means a very late bottle for himself. So if he's able to get a free like free wave and a half or something, then it'll be very, very good for him. So I imagine DDC will eh, hopefully help him, at least in the first couple uh, of waves or so. Well, you can see already just how defensive it looks like LV wants to be. The one ward they did decide to place is on their own Ancients. So right now, keeping DDC around mid, as you had said, it is going to be Whisper on the Earthshaker out in that off lane, by the way. Um, he didn't spend a whole lot of gold. He's got 360 saved up, so we'll see if he wants to go for something like Boots next. But for now, Siler's going to be making his life a living hell. Takes a tower shot there for no good reason, but sometimes you overextend. MMY shows his face, has that DD that he picked up at the zero mark, but... Not going to accomplish a whole lot down the bottom. It's going to be in July farming in the face of ZYF. Yep, and Wisp doing some stacking. Unfortunately, they spent their time trying to smoke gank level one. So he wasn't able to break the trees here to actually get the double stack, which is a little bit annoying, but uh, not the end of the world. I feel like Whisper is going to struggle pretty mightily. He's going to make his way down to the river. He knows there's a double pull, so he's just going to try to sap XP off of this. But Faith has eyes on him already and is moving him out. And there's just a lot of kill potential here if the uh, Razor's anywhere near in position. And with no ward down to try to even block the spawn, it's going to be real hard for him to get forward and get much. And this always worries me. I mean, he can always fall back and, you know, try to fissure block back here to get the wave going in his own direction. But in mid, you know, eating some damage, there's going to be a Searing Chains. And uh, are they going to get him? There's Sunstrike, but it's going to do some damage. Doesn't matter. First Blood. Goes to LV as they just kind of casually walked up and killed themselves and invoker DDC. Ooh, so close. 15 HP, but did make it away. Yeah, he, he's probably not going to go get a rune because it's just too dangerous. If he meets a support hero top, he dies. 
Bottom lane is actually already preoccupied, and that's going to be a regen for Ian Flame. So, really nice for him. Boots, I imagine, on top of what he has, and he actually just suicides himself to the neutrals yeah. right there, <laughs> which is a fine decision to make. But um, yeah, actually, when you said Whisper, I was th I thought you were like trying to find a new funny name for the for the IO or the Wisp. <laughs> it's like Whisper. Wait, what? <laughs> Oh, there's the Fissure, and this is what I was talking about that is a strength of an Earthshaker on the offlane. Now, though, he will be dove. Is there any reaction coming? There's the Hex, the Static Link. They're diving deep if they expect to get this kill. There's the follow-up with the Earth Spike. Are they going to go post-Tier 2? No. But, yeah, being able to throw the Fissure like that, you can see very little damage was actually done. Ember just got another kill on the Invoker. While all that was happening, DDC and Inflame were showing just how strong this tandem can be. Yeah, and with the dive right there, a Silo is going to miss like a full wave and a half. Mm -hmm. That's really big. I, I don't think they have any business trying to go for that. Like, they're too low level. There's only a level one nuke, the plasma field for the Razor. So, in, and even then, it got nerfed on its damage. So, kind of an overextension right there. And yeah, with the diving in mid, it's just going to get worse and worse. And once this Wisp gets level six as well, it means every lane is going to be under the gun. Yep. This is a hybrid build very early out of the invoker i suspect he'll go pure exhort afterwards but just getting the one point into wex so he can qq walk himself to safety if things go crooked next time i think um he actually just put his latest point into quas anyway so he already had the point into wex there's a big convergence now from lv as they've got four in range and they just want to go for the jugular on poor yao whispers there fissure no he, he wound up at stop there's going to be the tornado to turn it around MMY thought about coming in, but not even needed. So a little bit of a misplay there, a little too aggressive. Yeah, I, and that tornado just completely nullifies the, uh, the flame guard. He just activated it and just goes away. So yep. if it's actually kind of a nice build, the 1-1-1, one, 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 because he not only has uh, Ghost Walk if he needs it, but yeah, the, for, for the tornado. It's not for the damage, it's just for the dispelling of the, uh, of the flame guard. That was a Four minute runes are up. That's a bounty. Picked up and an illusion bottled up by the IO, so at the very least, LV is continuing to maintain room control. Talking about overall CS, Inflame doesn't have nearly as many as he'd like. Well, the Invoker's not doing a whole lot better, but he has an excuse. He's died a bunch. Um, the Invoker sitting at 12, 7 for, uh, for Inflame right now. The Razor doing okay, but like you said, he did miss out on some. He's at 23 atop the board, only slightly ahead of the Bristleback. It's the Bristleback, really, ZYF that I'm kind of impressed with. Not only is he farming, but he is held down in July with the help of his support rotations very effectively. Yeah, they did get those nice two kills on Invoker, but uh, prior to that, Inflame was, wasn't farming for like a good wave and a half, if not two waves, just because the, the DD from MMY, which was really annoying for him. So, yeah, Bristleback is kind of just a straight-up 1v1. Like, I don't really think Ogre can actually pose any threat to this void so there's no point for him to actually try to zone him out anyway so yeah it's a straight up 1v1 here with ogre just doing pulls and whatnot and he's gonna connect this one to get level three off of it i want to see demons get more active i think um like you said and in july is getting close to six so demons has to be careful uh there's gonna come a point sooner rather than later when in july can just solo him he's way out there on his own right now though and just coming out to take a cs He's going to beat the rotation as DDC seemed to be heading in that direction. No, he's he's lingering. And at pre-6, this could be risky. The Bristle is spending more time focusing on CS. Now we'll be able to get on top of him and do some damage. Doesn't have a single point into the nasal goo, though. But one quick time walk gets him back to safety. And he has the Warpath now, too. So every little bit of stack will actually help out his damage. Um, the next couple of ganks that we see with the Ember Spirit, if they do try to kill this uh, Invoker, they do have Dust ready to go. Oh, speaking of... They got him. He jumped to the other side, and that's gonna... Is he gonna get away because of that? They do go ahead and use the Dust, but behind that, it's taking a lot of time, and Inflame's gonna end up being traded away. He actually... Oh, they got Io as well, and they may get Whisper. Siler's right there, has his face boots up. I don't think he's gonna mind... <laughs> Very nice attempt to steal the mana and whisper. Uh, yeah, he's dead. Not a whole lot he can do. I don't know why he didn't just run straight back behind the tower. But here comes DDC back in. He's going to hook up and try to do some damage with his orbs. Unfortunately, the spirit's unable to catch up with Siler. Gets a few on the MMY. Now the TP back in from Yao. Does he have a cold snap? Uh, not going to need it in July. Just going to come in and right click him. And they are just kind of feeding right now. This mid has not worked out at all after those initial ganks. Up at top, though, Faith is under assault. Going to try to TP away in, in the face of Inflame and did manage to do so. Inflame used his slide of fist, but it wasn't enough damage. And uh, that Ancient Apparition able to make it away. But yeah, that Fissure went off and it caught him at kind of a funny angle. I want to say it was something kind of like this. 
And uh, when the Ember jumped, he jumped, even though the Invoker was here, he jumped onto this side. So he had to try to go around to secure the kill, and it didn't work out. Yeah, just a big overshot of the ult and definitely hurt him. Maybe he just wasn't expecting the stun to come out so early, as you mentioned, and just kind of plan to get it, get himself in position without the aid of the stun. So kind of awkward right there, but a really nice rotation from Silar. And I talked about this before, but in this patch right now, it, the carries that move around are usually on the winning team. Uh oh, in flame spotted out. Sunstrike's going to be a little late. He will get the searing chains on the MMY Whisper once again there throughout the Fissure, but they can't get the damage and DDC's dead again. They bring in help and turn it around. That was just a fortuitous sentry dropped. In flame was sitting right about here with an invis. And they drop a sentry right on top of him. They will hit another fissure. There's a slide of fist that does some damage. Fire blast on the faith, but no follow. And they're spending a lot of manpower here in mid and not accomplishing a whole hell of a lot. In fact, they're giving away a lot more than they're getting. So the wasted time and the grouping up like this hurting their overall XP and gold efficiency. In the meantime, DDC's bailed out. He's going to a solo lane just to get six whenever he possibly can. Yeah, and w Wisp had such a good start too with the first blood and mm -hmm. starting out with a bottle and not really buying anything like wards or anything like that. But uh, I I've seen this so many times from Wisp players where they're like, they try so hard to get their their Wisp balls to like, their, the spirits to hit appropriately. But they don't. Mm -hmm. They just forget about the position of their hero and they end up just taking way too much damage. Okay. And Down at the bottom, ZYF converged on. There's an ice path to follow up the Chronosphere. And they're going to get him. He'll shatter shortly. Yep, there it is. MMY coming down to help out. An Ancient Apparition helping from distance. Yao could be in trouble again. They're going to get a Cold Feet proc? No, actually not. Uses the ulti to jump. Remnanted away from that. But still, once again, unable to secure a kill on either Faith or Yao. And his farm is catching up some. Despite all of the failed attempts here, they are at least pressuring the Invoker sufficiently to keep him from farming. But uh, the Razor is going to be a major issue. Siler now going straight for what would one would imagine is going to be a mech already has up the buckler and a ring of health. They may take a shot at In July here. In July does have a time walk, does not have Chrono. Whisper right there, trying to wait it out. There's the time walk, and, and he does have three levels in the time walk, so quite good range and distance on Yeah, and this is what I talked about in the pregame, too, with uh, the last couple times we've seen LGD where they've drafted a more greedy carry, something like, you know, the uh, the Weaver, um, which isn't that great a lane, especially against contention. Ooh. In flame, just about died. He got caught. There's a ward up here uh, that gave them vision across the river. And they saw him come up. They immediately hit him with an earth spike, a cold snap, and uh, a sun strike. And then uh, Lion threw out his ulti, brought him down to within a 50 HP, all in one big go in about 60, probably just one second, actually. <laughs> it's good for him. Yeah, that, that flame guard can do some work, too. Not, not just offensively, but defensively. And he's actually not maxing it, though. I think it's a pretty smart decision just because of how good the tornado is against it. it completely nullifies it, so. Whisper trying to farm for free at bottom. They've got faith there. Ice Blast was shot at mid, though, so he doesn't have it for a while. Demons, in the meantime, finds himself another invis. And we'll see if he wants to head to mid or to bottom. Up at top, Siler is completely unaccounted for, man. And this has got to be, this is a problem. You can't have a Razor that's farming this freely. He is going to punish you at about the 15-minute mark. He's going to have Mech up very soon, already has up an Aquila, and has up his phase boots at this point in the game. His overall net worth is, yeah, 1,200 on top of the second in position, which is actually the Ember. That's kind of surprising. But his net worth is still 1,200 less at just 10 minutes in. Usually don't see gaps like that big open up at the uh, in terms of the leaders uh, this early on. Yep, and he's, again, a, a carry that's more active as opposed to, like, your Morphling and Weaver, which we've seen them draft in, in games prior. With a mech up at 11 minutes, actually, with the Nikila and Phase Boots, he is, he's ready to fight, and he's pretty tanky, too. They've got three at top. Looks like they want to take a tower. It's going to be Demons and ZYF that are left here by themselves, at least for now. I think it would be chancy to have a big reaction. They're going to go ahead and Chrono ZYF. Ice Blast is on the way. Sunstrike's going to connect as well, and, yep, he's down. Now, before they can say much of anything, here comes Io on in, and in flame doing what he can, but he landed in the middle of a very hostile uh, LZ, and he's going to end up dead. Yeah, I'm not sure why they came in there. I mean, there's just no way. There's too much disable. The damage sapped by Siler was huge. And, yeah, they just turned what should have been one death into a couple, into three, make it four. They, how did they get DDC? Oh, he came back in the mid and died. Yep, yeah, I was sitting there waiting for him. Just picked up a Midas as well. This is actually crumbling apart very, very rapidly for LV. 
Mm. And it's weird to say that they might be in desperation mode at 12 minutes, but I actually think they are. Like, that, that yeah. seemed like a desperation relocate, if I've ever seen one. Yeah, I, 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 the, the Ember's been doing work. I mean, the fact that he is number two in overall net worth, and now he's right up on Yao, and he's going to try to make something happen. Flame Guard purged off once again with that tornado. He still may be able to get some right click. If he can get one more searing chains before the creeps get there. Oops. Got to take your chance. Trying to get on the other side. Got it. And he's going to end up dead. MMY. <laughs> <laughs> the drive MMY goes, <laughs> Yeah. Worked real hard for that, didn't you? Here's a finger. Enjoy. Tell me how that tastes. He just got two levels from that, too. <laughs> pretty big, pretty big oh. MMY. It looks like they're going to get him again. Yeah. So they bring him down, and Ogre actually gets 450 gold from that. So not too shabby. But still, LGD, despite losing two for one, is still pretty handily in the lead. We can see things have leveled off a bit after that sequence, but 4,000 gold lead to 13 minutes is no joke. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. We talked about the counters that Razor has to Bristleback. I will say that... The one good thing that Bristleback has going for him is that with the uh, resurgence of this new item in the Crimson Guard, it's actually quite good against Razor. And since he naturally is a hero that would buy that, it's not too terrible. Fissure catches Yauk and they follow it. Fire Blast is there. Tornado did go off. Here comes an Ice Blast that's going to connect on the demons and just him. And LGD continuing to pour it on. Heard a Sunstrike. And Yao's going to end up dead to the back of this. That was in Flame and DDC who jumped into the woods. They're going to Head on and spot a bounty rune that's going to be picked up and bottled. Siler trying to chase him down. So they end up getting Yao once again. If they can keep the invoker down a little bit longer, they're going to open themselves up a little bit of breathing room. But LGD is still just so damn far ahead. And that Crimson Guard, as nice as it is, is still a bit off for ZYF. He's still got a ways to go. Yeah, it is rather expensive. And actually, ZYF ports mid. This is kind of weird to me. I don't really know if he should be doing that. I think he should have just been staying top. Oh, Chrono. Gonna catch three, and there's an Ice Blast on the two. One's down immediately. Whisper may die anyway. CYF dead to rights. There's gonna be an Echo Slam to buy some time, and he does get a Searing Chains on to in July. Fisher's there, and they bring him down. MMY and Siler cut off. There's that mech coming into play, though. Here comes Yao. In the meantime, the Ember Spirit caught out and got way too aggressive. He's dead because of it. These two supports are so low, they lose one. Ends up being a three for two. So technically, LGD wins the engagement, but a very nice counter initiation out of LV that time. And these tornadoes are just owning. Like, he is now primarily an exhort, like your, your typical exhort invoker, but just with one point of this Wex, even before getting the double forge spirits, it's just so useful. Not for the ghost walk, it's for this this tornado. It's totally owning this ember spirit. And I don't see enough invokers abuse this. It's just it's a really good tool against him. There is a blink up on Lion now. And I feel like that's actually a very big deal. Against a hero like an Earthshaker, you really want to get on him quick. And not allow him because the the success that LV's been having has been because of these fissures. You know, LG LGD initiates, they get a kill, then a big fissure comes out, then they follow it up with damage. And if they can take that out of the equation, I think that uh, LGD is going to be in fantastic shape. Like you said, the tornado is already doing work, and now with this one big mobility item, they're going to be able to fight very effectively around Chronosphere, and they don't have to rely on Void to be their only initiation. Speaking of initiation, LV wants to fight, and they're going to pick one. Smoked up as a team. And heading through mid, ZYF actually just revealed himself. Yeah, it's pinged. That was weird. Yep, they know exactly what's going on. Yeah, oh, they're going to run right into them, though. And there goes a ward. They're going to try to back off this. There's going to be a fire blast on the faith. Here we go. And Flame wants to fight. Gets off the slide of fist. There's a fissure that doesn't do much, though. Ice Blast is used to counter-initiate. DDC may end up dead and will. As he's finished off with a plasma field, the other two at the top are going to be left to their own devices. There's going to be the Hex on the Inflame. Here comes ZYF from behind. Deafening Blast and one nice Sunstrike on the, on the money. Brings down the Ember. Another good fissure that's going to buy them time to retreat. That was just weird. I don't know. Like, ZYF, they smoked. And they went this way, but ZYF ran down and quill sprayed. I think his thinking was he wanted to like make it look like he was already there and just to try to give him the illusion that they weren't actually smoking. I know it sounds kind of weird and counterproductive, but it just the way that he revealed himself was like in the middle of the creep wave. It wasn't like him walking up to it from the high ground. It was just he appeared. And right. uh, it was it was realized very quickly with the immediate pings on not only him, but where the exact whole team of LV was. So yep. kind of awkward. And yeah, Yao reacted quickly. As soon as the quill spray went off, you saw ping ping right here uh, in pink, and then ping ping right here. But in flames, got eyes on in July, and gonna do some damage for free. In July's gonna turn right back around and drop a chrono. Going to work, Sunstrike. 
actually misses. That is costly. He's going to have to jump away. I don't know if he just tried to do it on the mini-map and misclicked or what, but yeah, he ends up dead. So, big misstep there, and oh, yeah, I can tell you right now that uh, in July is not very happy with his mid-player. I didn't see it, but he just totally whiffed it or something? Or? Yeah, no, there was a chrono, and he whiffed it. It shot outside. It, sh it was just not on the mark on a chronosphere target. Mm. Well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> not much more to say about that. Top lane, this tier one could be dropping. Crimson Guard is done now on the Bristleback, so LV's bought themselves sufficient time for that. And with the Ember Spirit slowly adding to his inventory, getting close to drums, in fact, he's got it right now, just finished them. I feel like they're in a better position than I would have guessed they would be. Um, and you can tell by the graphs, it's, they, they agree with that as well. A couple of missed opportunities. Minus is up on Yao, as well as a book. But I think if LGD just resets and takes another big fight or two, they're going to have LV back in that moment of desperation. But they need to do it soon, because these heroes from LV are not going to sit around and stay under farm for long. I think actually everyone in the game is just very under farmed compared to what you want to be, except for like mm -hmm. two heroes. Maybe like the Razor is right where he wants to be. And actually this line is ridiculously under, or sorry, ridiculously farmed. He's six one and six and had uh, like a fifteen minute blink dagger. Mm -hmm. Oh, in mid LV pressuring the tier one. Seen a couple of towers drop lately. Could be another big fight on the way. Siler is going scepter. Has picked up his point booster. Glyph deployed on the tier one. They're going to come from the backside. And they're just going to go ahead and yeah latch right onto ZYF. There's going to be the earth spike that blink shown off and. They managed to connect with the Ice Blast that time. There's going to be a nice Echo Slam, though. Now the Chrono goes down. DDC, the target they want to bring down. Easy peasy. ZYF still standing, but not for long, most likely. Deploys the Crimson Guard, but only going to buy him a little bit of time. Angelai does have to be careful here. There's the Remnant and a multicast on the Siler on the low ground, so he's going to head back up high. Yao's there with him. No, the Urn, not enough to keep him alive after the Searing Chains. Well-timed by Inflame. They end up losing two for one. But again, a fight that could have been much, much worse than it was. Actually, the IO, uh, I'm pretty sure the IO dropped in the midst of all that, too. Yeah, he bought that. Now they're going to go ahead and dive behind the tower. Demon's in trouble, but the Sunstrike not doing enough damage. They managed to clean up one from behind. That was the Lion. Now Yao and company are on the run. In flame right behind him. He tries to Ghost Walk, but he's going to end up being burned down. If he's not very, very careful. In flame, trying to guess where he's gone, trying to catch up with Faith. Has a slide of fist and a Searing Chain's got him. Right near that tier three. And another free kill for him. He remnants back to safety afterwards. And DDC, not quite as lucky, <laughs> followed the uh, Ember Spirit perhaps a little too far. Let's see if they can get on top of him. He's going to earn himself and try to find a way to safety. Doesn't have a TP and doesn't have relocate, so... Oh, in July? He's a lot of damage in the GM. Yeah. Almost killed in July. He walked right into the Spirits. I think he backtracked one of those. I don't know. I probably wouldn't have mattered <laughs> if he's at 80 HP after that, but... Yeah. That, that would have been embarrassing, to say the least. To put it mildly, yes. 12 to 21. I, uh, LV ends up giving up another death there, but I feel like they're they're hanging in quite well, man. I'm really impressed with their resilience because it, it looked like this game had all but gotten away from them. With a blink up on Whisper now, he's a much bigger threat. And I think, like you said, it's, it's going to come down to these Chronospheres. They need to Chrono the Ember. They need to kill him. If they can do that, they can win fights. Yeah, and God, the damage output from Earthshaker is going to be huge. This this hero does so much damage. And having a relatively timely blink, actually. 20 minutes, not too bad. MMY is doing a lot of work in these fights as well with his blink, so you can only imagine how much this Ember Spirit, or sorry, this Earthshaker is going to do. Yep. LGD could be under assault here again. There's five. Right here, Searing Chains caught nothing but creeps. There's a fissure to shove the creeps back off the high ground as well. Collapsing from the edge, though, is LGD under cover of smoke. They're going to spot demons first. Demons and DDC. There we go. They go right on in. Earth Spike's been on DDC. They need to follow this up. Three-man Chronosphere. If they can bring down ZYF and demons in time, ZYF will end up dead, and so does demons. The rest of them have to just run. Very efficient and well-executed gank that time coming in from the flank. And Siler, using his ulti, guarantees this tower will end up dropping. And Inflame trying to do what he can just to make a nuisance of himself. But that's a very well-executed fight. And that's what this team composition we knew had a chance to do in the mid-game. We talked about it during the draft. And that time they finally got it all to click in place. Yeah, these Chronospheres are just a humongous problem for LV. I don't know how they really combat it other than the Wisp relocate. But yeah. when he dies like that, it's obviously useless. And 
It's also quite a good tool, honestly, against the uh, the bristleback because you can reposition yourself to where you're for sure attacking him from the front if you need to, and then he's not as t he's not nearly as tanky as he once felt. Siler engaged at top. Let's see if they have the damage and follow it up. Fissure and MMY is there to try to help bail him out. Sunstrike on the way. And the Finger of Whisper barely able to survive. They use the Crimson Guard there. Here comes DDC and Inflame, though. Chasing down Siler with the relocate. He is moving so quick. Mech was already used. He's going to have wand charges in one second. Not enough time. Inflame oh. completes a killing spree. And behind that, looks like the Lion dropped, too. I didn't even see how. Looks like they got him with the Fissure, eh? That the very furthest edge man that was an amazing <laughs> fisher by whisper still st like a lot of players right after he barely lives right there would just book it as we have a pause would just book it right afterwards and uh and head to the hills but he stayed around and felt he was still useful for one more stun and it was a big stun at that lv showing again that resilience yao has to deny his mid tower he's on book two right now We'll be up to book three long before long, but there's an invis for Faceless Void, and he's going to have Chrono up in two seconds as well, so chance to find himself a target of opportunity. Yep, and Razor is still pulling ahead quite nicely as far as net worth, but uh, obviously that kill will help LV. And I'm, I'm interested to see how this Bristleback transitions also. Like, the Crimson Guard is so good for against... For his team against Razor specifically, it's good against Forge Spirits, I would imagine, too. I never really see it picked up for that reason, but probably will med uh, you know, mitigate a lot of damage from that. I'm just curious to see where he goes from here. Book three done for Yell, and he's putting those creeps to use mighty quick. Moves into the Roche Pit with the Forge Spirits and the book creeps, and that's going to be his whole team. It doesn't look like they're in any position to contest this, and even if they are aware it's going on, they're way too far away. And that dire advantage is going to come into play with this build and with these heroes for sure. In July, seems like he's heading for a BKB. He's picked up an Ogre Club, and I dig it. Um, right now, we talked about it. Like, you can relocate one target out of a Chronosphere, but the other option is to just, you know, throw a Fissure, which is an excellent long, uh, long stun outside of the Chrono and so on. Uh, Fire Blast has a decent range on it as well, so you can stun a Faceless Void who's in Chrono. But he gets a BKB up, it's basically going to be impossible for them to do much of anything except relocate to try to save anyone. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not I'm not actually the biggest fan of BKB because I don't feel like he can just run in BKB and, be, like, and just force them to fight him. Because they're just going to run away. They have a nice mobile item on the line. He can just blink away. They can also just blink initiate with Hex before... I, I wouldn't be opposed to him trying to get a Heaven's Halberd against both Void and uh, Razor. I imagine Void would probably go for BKB himself, which, yeah, it does look like he's going to. Actually, he has a finish, so maybe Heaven's Halberd, if, just be simply because he has it this fast, this BKB might not be effective. But, yeah, I'm, I don't know. I'm not 100% I'm not sold on the BKB from Bristol if that's what he decides to go for, and it, and it is. Yeah, he's uh, added to it. I was I, I was actually previously talking about the void BKB. Oh, okay. I actually, no, perfect. I, I like it a bunch. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just perfect. because. And LV could be in trouble. LGD is collapsing. ZYF out on an island. Oh, very nice usage of the vortex is slowing down. Allows the hex and everything else to follow. He did use his crimson guard. They have to expend a lot, but it's well worth it. He's down for 50 seconds now. And in the meantime, the uh, whisper was actually in position trying to deny that. It looks like he missed it. He was right there with the tower, and it didn't get denied. So unfortunate for them. But I think LGD is probably getting close to... I mean, they still have Tier 2s to clear. But with this Aegis, if they can uh, take this Tier 2 without being contested, they may be willing to try to go high ground, as they do still have Chrono. Yeah, this was a last pick Razor, too. Like, it's amazing that it still made it in the, in the draft, but at last pick, and it's just doing so much work. So we're still seeing the, the sheer power of the Razor. Like, this is picked up much more frequently in the Western scene, but they're still showing how it still has a lot of punch to it. And I think it's a perfect hero for Razor, or sorry, for Siler. It balances good fighting early, and then it's still strong carry potential late. Certainly has worked out this time in both regards. And they are going to pull back. <clears throat> and just go ahead and reset. Should still be a couple of minutes left on that Aegis. So if they want to put it to use, they're going to have plenty of time. Looks like they just want to run it tier two bottom. You know, this has got to be such a, a really nervous time for LV because they know if they try to defend the tier two and fail, they're going to have to expend buybacks. And honestly, the Ember is the only one who has a buyback on their squad. So like you're talking one loss fight against a Razor with his ulti, which is going to be back up in eight seconds because he finished his Scepter not long ago. 
You know, if they take try to take a fight at a tier two and lose, it could just be racks. And if they wait and don't make them try to do anything to take the tier two, then they have all of their ultimates. Maybe they're willing to go high ground. In flame comes in, found two, but the whole team is right behind them. And he's going to end up dead because of it. Behind that, though, here comes ZYF. BKB used by Angeli. Got off the chrono. DDC is down. They dropped the rock on the ZYF. And now he's going to turn and try to go to town on Faith and MMY. Siler, though, has a leash on him. Where are you going, big boy? Right back to the fountain. As they finish him off with a double kill from Siler. They now double up LV. And there's that ugly lost fight. Ember cannot buy back after his death. In fact, no one can. And they're going to realize that sooner rather than later. They're going to run at this tier three, probably thinking if they have buyback, they'll hear it real soon. And as soon as they don't, they're just going to know with this many creeps, this kind of push power, three racks for sure. Oh, it's definitely racks. Racer still has Aegis, still has BKB unexpended, still has level three Eye of the Storm Ags. Yeah, this is definitely racks. And they, there's just actually no way that LV can deal with this Chronosphere. Like, again, it's, it's relocate, but... I, I'm not seeing it. He's not. He's either not staying outside. It was a really nice chrono that caught him on the edge. Yep. And, uh, it's just. It's not working out. They have no answer to this. I feel like Inflame has jumped the gun a few times, and right there was one of them. I mean, he comes in, he sees two targets, gets off perfect searing chains on both of them, but then everyone converges, and it's and they had to know it was coming because the razor was showing himself in lane. So trying to make a play, and you understand, you're behind like this. You're not going to win by just playing conservatively. But nonetheless, LGD, this is as good as I've seen them look in D2L, man. And against the team in LV that has been looking fantastic up to this point. Yep, I agree with you. And then the Aghanim Scepter here coming out for Yao. Interesting pickup. But he is level 17 relatively soon, so it's it's not like he's rushing it and getting it at level 12, and it seems relatively useless. But uh, yeah, no good for him. He can cast a lot of different spells. As maxed out Exor, I imagine Wex will be secondary here. And uh, yeah, LGD definitely their game to lose. And uh, Razor, I'm not sure what he wants to get. Uh, oh, relocate, relocate on, top. on the top. They want to kill Siler. That age has just expired too. Oh, they man. executed it perfectly. It expired about 20, 30 seconds ago. So well spotted and well played by LV. Whisper was hanging around right in front of Siler for a long time trying to set that up. And, you know, it's a first step in a long road, but at least they took it. Yeah, and I, I'm wondering what Racer decides to go for next. I don't think he... I don't think he really needs heart. I still think Ags is... Or sorry, Refreshers is so good uh, at this stage in the game. I think BKB is all he needs, and it's a decent duration, too. It's still the full 10 seconds, actually. So yeah, I would hope to see a Refresher coming out from, from the Razor. Everything's settling down a bit, though. In July and MMY are moving up. Check that. Not going to be settled for long. They're going to spot in flame, and there you go. Follow up with the chrono. Didn't get DDC. DDC doesn't have relocate, though, because they used it on the gang, so he can't save in flame. Down he goes. And that's the one of the few times we've seen DDC actually in the right position and not getting caught by that chrono and just didn't have it off cooldown. Yep. Kind of unfortunate. But I that comes back to maybe an, an innate drafting problem. Like... If you're solely relying on just to relocate to bail you out, I I don't think that's enough. I don't think that mm -hmm. I don't think you have the luxury to just rely on that only because you're, you're not. There's always going to be times where you can't actually get it off. It's not right. going to be a perfect scenario every single time. So, again, I think the main problem is just they have no, they can't do anything about the, these chronospheres. Imagine if he gets an AGS too, where he can have it every sixty seconds. Like that's going to be huge. LGD rattling their saber down mid, looking to force a fight in July. 40 seconds, give or take, until he has Chrono. Almost, he yeah, has ZYF. Kind of caught out here. Gets hit with a multicast. Now they're going to go ahead and use the Crimson Guard. Siler going toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. Has got a leash on him and is not scared at all. Just going to chase him all the way back. Damn near killed him. Creeps in the meantime doing their work. This is just buying time for the Chrono and forcing LV to expend things. Did he just relocate? Yeah, I, I was just going to ask you that. I feel like he yeah, was going to relocate the, the Bristle because he thought maybe Bristle was going to die, but... Well, that's another instance of he's not going to have it up for another 50 seconds, and if this Chronosphere, yeah. which is up in four seconds, comes out, there's, again, nothing that they can do about it. Uh, it looks like LGD not in any rush. Um, Perseverance picked up by Silers, we just saw, so going for a refresher next. Really digging that. But yeah, I mean, we during the draft, the big concern was just how much mid-game punching power LGD was going to have here. And they have done nothing but flex it. And LV finds themselves, yeah, they're behind the, the charts. Don't even need to explain at this point. 
Um, and it's totally LGD's game to decide how they want to win. If they want to back off farm a bit more, go for an Aegis. I don't know that LV can reliably contest them. Um, Inflame just isn't farmed enough. At 32 minutes in, he has drums, Battle Fury, phase. That's it. So he is way behind where he needs and wants to be. In fact, less farm than the Bristleback is at this stage. Yeah, and I just... Yeah, I mean, he's okay at base defense, but there's just too much on the side of LGD and heroes that kind of just run at you in the base and catch you or obviously make your base defense useless. So I'm talking specifically this Void. Again, I, I think he should definitely get this uh, this Aghanims before he completes Mjolnir. I think just having it up is more important than getting damage out from your team. Just having up Kronos is going to be the way to get an easy victory here for LGD. I don't think damage is your issue either. I mean, you look at the combat potential of an Ex <laughs> Exord Invoker, uh, Razor that's over-farmed, the Burst of a Lion, and this is all with Ice Blast, so yeah. uh, your kill threshold is much, much higher. And yeah, I totally agree with you. I, I don't know that they're even going to need to worry about it. I think if they take a, a win at the Tier 3, it's just game over. And we'll switch back to the buybacks to see who has what. How about nobody? Nope, check that. DDC. <laughs> IO has buyback, and that's it. So if they decide to force a fight here and get any kind of a win, it's going to be GG. You know it would be interesting? Almost at this point, you almost want to go for like the YOLO relo relocate bait into a chrono and just have yourself go. <laughs> yeah. I'm not even kidding. We'll see. That'd be some next level plays. Looks like LGD wants to take a Roshan to be super safe. Not going to have to wait long. Only about 30 seconds. Give or take. Siler will poke his nose in and not be happy to see the big guys not around, but I would imagine they're going to be localizing themselves to right here for the next 30 seconds or so. And July is yet to pick up anything else. So, still perhaps waiting to see if he wants to finish Mjolnir or Scepter. Inflame at least has added a crit stick, so Crystalis up will help him some. The issue is I just don't think his team can sustain long enough for the Ember Spirit to do what Ember Spirit does, which is spam over and over again and really just whittle teams down, time, you know, uh, over time. And not to mention LGG is just tanked up. How many Scepter? See, they got one Scepter there. They got one on the way, half of one. So they have two and a half. Yeah, two and a half scepters and potentially more than that. Yeah, there are no nope, three scepters. So three scepters are done on LGD right now. And potentially four if Angelina decides to go in that direction as well. He's headed to the secret shop. No, I thought he might buy a point booster. Not the case. Gonna go try to get a solo kill on New Inflame, and he may damn well get it too. He's gotta be conscious of the relocate that could be coming in though. And nope, never mind. Ember Spirit just remnant it away. Hell, uh, even MMY can get one if he wants. That, yeah. that AOE finger of death is pretty cool. Pretty legit. He does have a Yules for himself. Pretty damn good. Mm -hmm. Ogre just picked up a four staff, so no Ags again from the Ogre today. So no crazy, crazy multicasts over and over. But uh, I don't think that he would be able to farm that anyway. With that age just now done, looks like they're ready to press. And in July, nowhere near where he needs to be. Looks like he's going to TP to the tier two mid. And look to make his way here. That is a big earth shaker with bloodlust on him. Holy crap. Yeah. He looks angry. He's like, like, it looks like, it looks like Ember could jump on his back and ride him. <laughs> it's like in Dota 1, if you remember when you activated PKB, you'd make those whoa, buh, buh sound, and then just, <laughs> just your hero grows, but you're not like golden. That reminds me of. Never played Dota 1, man. Oh, no, no. Nope. I knew what it was. Vintage, Saw play. Vintage Never Dota. Really. Vintage Dota. I was a StarCraft guy before I found the love, the life, the universe that is there. Here we go. Tier 3 down in mid. Rax soon to be down as well. And they're not even contesting this. Ag's refresher, pretty good on Razor, as we're seeing right now. I mean, they're just going to give up free Rax. Just may as well GG. I mean, like, they have to contest something. I guess they want to wait it out, but that's a one. It's now one no matter what. Even if they kill three of five or four of five, it's still worth it just to uh, to get the racks down. So LGD going to back up, reset, and look to run at tier three top. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going to change from, from now till the next <laughs> time they push in the tier threes. Right. So kind of an interesting decision. I The only possible thing I would think they're thinking is that they're just trying to wait out Aegis, but I think it's way too much time for that. Big old creep wave coming as well. Ice blast shot. Let me see where it went. 
Uh, they're gonna come out and try to catch him with the creep wave, it looks like. Wisp just bought a rod of eight ups. <laughs> and Siler BKBs and is just running down ZYF from behind. He will be forced staffed to safety, so at least forcing out Siler's BKB a little early. Not that bad. They're just gonna look to set up a chronosphere though. And here's a smoke. They want to come out and try to make something happen. They may get two. They got two with Searing Chains. No, they didn't get in July. That's the one they really needed. There's an Echo Slam. Doesn't do much. In July, caught and stunned out. Three-time multicast with BKBs. After it wears off, there's that Finger of Death. Brings down the Earthshaker, and now the Chrono goes down on the CYF. Good damage is coming out from Inflame. He may get two behind it, and they're just going to call the GG, though. So it wasn't a completely lost fight. They did get the Aegis, but in the end, in July, not able to do it on his own. Not for this evening. As game one ends up going the way of LGD. And I'll tell you, man, we the last couple of times we've seen LGD in action here in D2L Season 5 play, it has been mediocre, to be totally honest. It just has. And LV is really the team that's impressed the hell out of both of us. But that time, that game, that particular sequence, LGD looked like they were playing up to the form and up to the star power of their roster like we would have expected them to start doing a month ago. Yeah, I I agree with you really on the uh, the crystal back pick. Like, I don't think that did anything this game. It was their last pick. They had plenty of time to think about what they wanted. Like the, the entire lineup was showing for LGD. Also, an offlane Earthshaker just didn't really get as much done as you'd like to see at the offlane. The biggest problem though was that uh, the dives in mid. They got two nice kills on on to uh, Yao, and they just kept, try kept trying to go for more and more. Good rotations from Faith and, and MMY proved to be successful. Even Silar actually. Good rotations from their from their carry razor, really jumping into the fray and getting some counter kills, really jump starting this farm. So, I would say overall very well played by LGD, but just a very nice standard cookie cutter draft. Like every hero worked well together. Oh yeah, well I can tell you the the worst games we've seen out of LV to date have been games where they kind of drafted themselves into a corner, where they didn't draft themselves a whole lot of options, they didn't draft themselves a whole lot of flex in their lineup. And uh, both of those times they got outplayed and both looked about, uh, honestly, this game went on 38 minutes, but it was all LGD for a long, long time. And LV just kind of kept it going, but unfortunately for them, unable to find any other way to gain an advantage. Thanks so much for being a part of the broadcast, guys. I'm your host, Aaron AC Chambers, live from our downtown studio here in San Francisco. The guy on the other side, his name is Trout. Make sure you check him out on Twitter and elsewhere. He's at Trout Dota, T-R-A-L-F-D-O-T-A. 6K Wonder Boy that he is and really damn good at Dota. So uh, make sure you catch him when he streams as well. I'm AC at E-Y-E-S-E-E. -E -E. And over, I want to say, let me look, check the camera. Yeah, right, right, right there. Right there is an amazing deal for you. Should still be going on to the best of my knowledge. I'm pretty sure it's still going on. Anyway, you can find out by going to kingston.com slash D2LS5, the amazing HyperX Cloud headset. $30 dollars off down from $99.99 to $69.99 you can buy it at new egg or amazon whichever you prefer for details on how to get that deal and where to find it kingston.com slash d2l s5 we got game two potentially our last game of the night coming up between lv and lgd stick with us we'll be right back